These are stench refuges. That's so that's what's the, breaking out the moisture. Yes, it stinks right here. That is the oxidizer. So where that orange light is up there, that is about 5,000 degrees in there. Wow. We're burning off everything. That's awesome. But that is the arm that'll fill that truck up pretty quickly. That's you know, amazing. It'll be on its way with the dry distiller strain. So that would be the arm. There's a control room right over there. Yeah. Basically, it runs up there. Right down that truck, yeah. That's awesome. And they do about five, three to five of those a day. So Your facility for spin grains is like bigger than all the breweries at Richmond combined. Like, oh, yeah. It really is. Like, it, we have a lot of breweries, and they could all fit in this area. And you, know, you can see where this was just basically an old aging warehouse. It's still got the numbers for the floors. Uh, they did a great job of renovating this oh, building. Yeah. And, Keeping it, and it fits feeling. right in. Yeah. the Nassau Historic. So that's the other one. That's the other, it is for the apples. On in. Oh, cool. This is awesome. So that's that. Uh, that's the one they redid. Yeah, we we can head on down there and look it over. There were eight of those fermenters. Wow. I have a feeling. I don't know for a fact. Probably four of those got destroyed when they put the boilers in because you had to dig so far down. There's actually five here. Only four are unearthed. So, are they going to end up doing special releases out of this? On to sell the only in the future? I don't know. That'd be pretty neat. That would be very neat. No, they've not you know, said anything to us yet. That doesn't mean it's not on somebody's plans. The one right here is the OFC that got hit by lightning. That That's that one. Still can imagine what would happen to a distillery when it gets hit by lightning. You don't win. No, I mean <laughs> the vapors and everything. Oh, It'd be like a bomb going off. Oh, absolutely. So you can see, see notice those fermenters. Um, one, two, three, four, and there's the fifth. They right. just never uncovered it. So that's the lock, you know, significant. It separates pools two and three of the Kentucky River. Um, I believe that became operational in 1844. Still works. Um, we don't have the barge traffic anymore like we used to, but we still have canoes going through it, Very recreational cool. vehicles. So this is pumping in from the river? That's the intake. That's the wow. intake pipe. That's amazing. Yeah, your in water intake is just down to the bottom of there. I'm pretty sure that's a bigger water main than it supplies my entire neighborhood. <laughs> it might. It probably has much more water going through it. Yeah. So we will go up that away and head toward the warehouse. Okay. So you can see the uh, filters to the back. Those are your thin and thick tanks. Right. And as the byproduct comes off, the spent beer comes out of the bottom of the still, that metal or that kind of Rectangular. Yeah. That's the filter that okay. separates it. Is it just like a, a perforated stainless filter or is it actual like cheese? I've never looked on the in inside of it. I'm always curious what people use for these things. My name's Lance. I'm with the single barrel program here. I will give you guys a quick rundown of this warehouse. I know Laura gave you guys a lot of history, so I'll kind of try to keep that to a minimum. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about these barrels and then you guys can get into the fun part. Um, so this is Warehouse H, it's the Bland's Warehouse, obviously very fitting with what y'all are picking here today. Um, it was built in 1934, metal, bright orange, and it is uninsulated. Um, it was kind of the first of its kind in that retrospect. So being uninsulated, hotter summers, colder winters, uh, more consistent temperature, but also greater temperature fluctuations. Um, so like spring and fall in here, you have one day that's 70, the next day is 35, you really feel the effects of that in here. Um, now they thought that that would make younger bourbon taste older. Wasn't necessarily the case, um, but it did produce a different flavor profile than anything we had so far on campus. Lo and behold, these were where Colonel Bland's honey barrels came from. This is the original single barrel warehouse. Obviously today, any bottle of Bland you guys see, it'll have Warehouse H on it, what floor, what rick, all that good stuff. And that's why we like to do our tastings in here. Um, these barrels were rolled out here fresh this morning. Each barrel is made of about 35 to 40 different staves, all 70 to 80 year old white oak. Looks like 
Missouri, 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 and Missouri. So uh, most of our barrels that I'm familiar with are from Missouri and Kentucky. Each of these barrels has already gone through normal quality control. Then in order to be a single barrel select barrel goes through an additional quality control. If you guys look, each barrel has a little spill mark. So what we do is we take a 200 milliliter sample, proof it down to 40, doesn't matter what it's gonna be bottled at. That has to be unanimous. Everybody goes in one at a time. We'll use my can for lack of a better reference. Go in, there's branded cups. We can come in and any cup is turned to the side with the logo facing out. We don't take that sample. Um, which essentially, once again, long-winded way of me saying, you guys are essentially cherry picking our cherry picks. These have already made their rounds through everything. Um, in your guys' cups, barrels A, B, C, and D. A and B are the top two, C and D are the bottom two. Each station's the same, nobody's trying to trick anybody. So normally when I do picks, because we do a lot for our restaurants, um, I kind of do a one minute, three minute, five minute taste to see how it changes. How long have these been sitting out? Uh, let's see here. Probably about, say, half hour, 45 minutes. Okay. So, um, they have been cut down, so they're at 93 proof. They have yeah. not been filtered. You'll notice plenty of barrel char. Okay. Uh, Mouthfeel might be slightly thicker, but nothing that's going to change dramatically flavor profile-wise. Yeah. We really don't have a system here. However you guys need to do it is how you do it. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, comments, questions, concerns before you get started? Yeah. Cool. By all means, feel free to jump in, guys. Okay. D has this kind of resounding palate. Like, it, it sits in the middle of your tongue with like a deep, sweet honey kind of thing. So I think it's D. Can I definitely try that? Like, Thank you very much. Yeah. Last Mac, thank you so much. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, Laura was great, our tour guide, and uh, that pig was spectacular. And I'm sorry if you live outside of Virginia, you will never be able to taste it, but it was great. And the best part was we got to try it at Barrel Proof, which unfortunately they will not sell it to us that way, but wow, what a, what a great pour. Thanks for watching us, guys.